All right, and we're back. I'm doing a little bit more with momentum. And specifically, we'll, we'll do a, a classic problem called the ballistic pendulum. Just going to change colors here. And uh, yeah, it's a relatively simple idea where you, you shoot something into a block that's hanging from a, a rope. Um, the bullet sticks, so we have an inelastic collision. And uh, then it starts to spin. Energy and momentum are transferred, and then it becomes just a normal pendulum swinging back and forth. We're ignoring air friction, heat losses, things like that. Um, you know, just to make it a little more simpler, something that we can, we can try to figure out. And the, the problem is, uh, what we know is what the maximum angle is that the pendulum swings up after the collision happens. And by, by knowing that maximum angle, or by knowing the height that it goes up, we should be able to figure out how fast that bullet was going originally. Now the trouble is, um, we can't use energy conservation to connect the before and after pictures because it's inelastic collisions. And some, some energy is going to be lost as the bullet penetrates into the material. But momentum will be conserved. Um, and what that would look like is the, uh, the initial momentum is the mass of the bullet times its initial speed. Now afterwards, because it's inelastic and, and the things stick together, we'll have the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. But in order for this to, to work, we would have to know what the final speed is right after the collision. So right after the collision, when the bullet is stuck inside the block, it starts moving at, at some speed, which we'll, we'll just call B-final. Okay, so the only way it's going to work is if we can figure out what this B-final is, then we can solve for V-initial, which is what we're after. Alright, so here goes. Um, how do we do this? Well, if, if we know the height, um, when, once the collision's over and the bullet's stuck inside there, the pendulum is just swinging. It, it's normal. So energy is conserved after the collision. Whatever that kinetic energy was right after the collision happens turns into potential energy when you're at your highest point of the swing. So basically, after the collision, we have the, the mass of the system, the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times 9.8 times whatever the height is, okay, that's going to be equal to whatever the kinetic energy is at the bottom of the swing. One half total, total mass times whatever V final squared is. So through energy conservation after the collision for the swinging pendulum, we can find V final. Okay, um, notice that the mass of the system drops out, so V final, if we solve for that, is going to be what, the square root of the 2 comes up times 9.8 times whatever the height is. Now, if, if we're given the height cool, we can just move on, but if we're given the angle instead, we have to remember how to get the height as a function of that angle. And that's not too bad. We, we can use this picture, use the triangle there. We know we've got the total length of the pendulum, but for this dashed triangle, this leg is L times the cosine of, of that angle. So we could rewrite this as the square root of 2 times 9.8 times the length, minus the length times the cosine of that angle. Okay, so once we have um, that speed using energy, we can plug it into our momentum equation. <laughs> can't talk. Our momentum equation, and then we're done. Uh, the original speed of the bullet is going to be the total mass when they're stuck together. Uh, we're going to divide through by the mass of the bullet. 
And then we just have to plug in vFinal. So depending which version we know, we could plug in the square root of 2GH. Or we could plug in, uh, if all we know is and measure is that angle, 2 times gravity times L. 1 minus the cosine of that angle. Okay, so yeah, that's how we end up doing it. It's a great example of um, inelastic collision where things stick together, and we have to make use of the energy conservation after the collision happens. And in the end, we can figure out, in this case, the speed of the bullet beforehand. So I, I hope this helps. I hope this, uh, you know, demonstrates that the power of these conservation laws that we have. Um, and until next time, we'll see you later.